old man Ebro. Peace. Peace. And you got your official death row background. You looking like you should night <laughs> on the cover of Vibe. Look at this thing. Yo, come here, come here, young Jay. Yo, Jay, you gotta look at Ebro. Yo, Jay. Yo, he got his death row shit set up. Look. His menacing look. Look. His menacing look. I want Paisley for you, Ebro. I want silk shit for you, man. Yeah, uh, man. He's coming all tight. He's ready black. for war. Like nah, Yo, nah, this is my same setup. I'm using the same setup I use on Hot or Apple. It's the same. It's the same prop. Yo, yo, let them know, Ebro, Apple. Let them know all that. Apple, nah, nah, nah. you've been a boss. You've been a boss. There's, not, there's nothing we can say about that. You've been a boss. It's, it's, it's no question. Nah, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not humble bragging. I'm just saying this. I, I'm doing the same thing. This shit, no, this Ebro, the same hat I wear every day. You've been such a boss. That's part of my problem with you. <laughs> it's that you've been such a boss. And so, yeah. uh, let, let's have a little fun right now. Well, well, first, uh, congratu first of all, thank you for having me and, 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 and opening this. You know, I, well, I, I'm, I'm you happy to be here. Well, tell your way on. So, well, I, had, I, got, I got sent a you, clip of you saying we had an issue and you wanted to hurt me. So then I would have called at Khaled the other day because I literally sometimes just FaceTime Khaled out the blue. And just, I do this, there's a few rappers I do it to just to see if they pick up, just so we can have some, you know, just not, you know, not in the game, just having fun. And Khaled was in the and middle so, of the massage. So Khaled was the in the phone. middle. Matt, man, he was, first, let's, let's just talk about it, just so everybody know. The Khaled y'all know and see all the time, don't think he's doing that for the grand. That's Khaled. <laughs> Yo, Emo, you call him. You call him out in the blue, yeah, and he, he got, got a masseuse. lady standing on his back, <laughs> massaging him. I'm like, yo, Ebro, she got his up foot in his ass right now. Yo, straight he up. was like, yo, this is amazing. <laughs> yo, and I just, all I, all I called to ask him was, and real talk, I didn't know y'all was there. I called to ask him, because I check on Khaled on the love. Because, you know, Khaled comes from where the radio guys come from. You know what I'm saying? He a DJ, DJ. He come from us. And we've all rallied. That's how we broke them. That's, and let me tell you a strategy I use for Khaled. Yeah. The strategy I use for Khaled, and he's my brother, and he gets upset when I say this sometimes. But, you know, I discovered DJ Khaled. We, we all know that. Yeah. And part of the strategy we used for him to blow him up was to individually call damn near every DJ in America and get with them and yeah. tell them, look, Khaled is representing y'all. And yeah. Kyle's gonna open doors for y'all. Yeah. And and they supported him and never looked back. And he's never forgot the DJs. And even nah. when uh, Envy was doing the 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 giveaway to the DJs, yep. he was the first to donate yep. fifty thousand to the DJs. And so that's how we broke. That was our strategy for DJ Khaled to begin with. That he comes from radio like you. Yeah. He's really like you. And somebody like him or Ludacris blew up before him. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yep. I had a radio, and we used to I, have fun. And, and I just hit him. I hit him like, "Yo, Cali, real talk. How much? Don't tell me the amount, but are Assad's grandkids taken care of? Like, did you make that kind of money in the last five years? Because it's, you know, we did an interview. Remember when Cali was reworking his deal and he went independent in that album? Like we that. had done that interview, and it went crazy with the congratulations you played yourself and. You know, he had his red jacket on, and that, you know, that video no, was No, that, that interview was one of your most legendary interviews. That's yeah. when Khaled went bad. Yeah. No, he went bad on that interview. You yeah. know, I always, every day, every single day on Instagram, I see a, a different clip from that interview. Yeah. Every Yo, but day. I, Yo. I just wanted to know, like, I get happy when I see cats, you know, really living. So I just called on that Alhamdulillah. type Alhamdulillah. And, uh, and you let just let me, happened to me, be there. Let me tell you what I could tell you is I don't know his bank account information. Yeah. But I could tell you it doesn't seem like he has any money problems <laughs> whatsoever. And then yeah. he forces me as because I'm not as rich as Cal. Let's be right. clear. Right. <laughs> at all. And but he forced if we go to a restaurant. It's two thousand dollar dip for no reason. We could, we, me and you could go for two, three hundred in that same spot. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm treating in this Cali, it's seven lobsters, six steaks, 
This, I don't know what the fuck. We can't even eat this shit. Sometimes we eat it, and I'm like, you know, I got a front for this guy. Like, you know, I nah. can't. And I you got to let him know. I, you got to let him know. I'm skinny Joe now. You got to chill. You know what I'm saying? You got to you gotta look to maintain now. You know what I'm saying? I'm yes? trying to tell him that. Yo, I'm you... trying to tell him, yo, my obsession, you know, I love food, but I'm not really in love with food no more. Right. So, like, I eat what I like to eat. I work out every day, and I try my best to, you know, Callis still love food. He still, yeah. it, it, yo, let's talk. Bring the oh. food out. Yesterday, Steve Stout came up in this house. I don't know how the hell he got past the COVID people, right? Because Callis got a team. They test yeah. everybody walking in this house. Yeah. Right? And even if you test great, he still got a problem with you. You got to stand <laughs> far from him. Yeah. And so Steve Stout made it in there. It was Thanksgiving again. Lobsters and this and this. And, you know, he, he likes that. Well, you, you know, know, Stout, you know, Stout, I ain't going to put all his business out, but he been on a, he told me he went to an island somewhere. They don't even let you on the island without, so he been stationary on an island. Stout, the whole, I think the whole COVID on an yeah, island you can't even get to. You know, Stout he got. He sounds extremely rich. He he's got an other thing. He another thing. No, no, no. He's another thing. And, and, and he just, these white people love him. I mean, you know, he's had, he's had a lot of success on their behalf. So guess what? It's time. You know what I'm saying? It's time. Now he get what he want. And I respect him very, very much. Yo, Ebro, you yes, grew sir. up in the Bay Area. Yeah, I was born in Berkeley, raised in Oakland and, and Sacramento, Northern Cali. What was raised? What was, at what age did they ship you over to New York? <laughs> oh, I didn't get to New York until 2002. 2001, 2002. So you went from the Bay Area somewhere else? Yeah, I went to Oregon. I was in Oregon from 99 and 2000, 2001 in Portland. I, I love go, Portland I, as well. I, I, I had, so I had started a radio station in 97, 98. I turned on my first radio station in 97, 98, and Sacramento was the first hip-hop station there. And um, then I helped turn on another radio station in Portland, Oregon, that the owner of the Trailblazers, uh, Paul Allen, he was a mm. you know founder of Microsoft. He had bought some radio stations, and one of the stations he just bought radio because he wanted to broadcast his Seahawks games and his Trailblazers games. But Rasheed Wallace wanted to do a radio show, so Paul Allen took the FM station and put on a hip hop station just so <laughs> Rasheed Wallace could have a radio show. A radio show, that's and then crazy. And then they brought me in and some other people in to, uh, you know, design the station. So how do you, with you all the way to fucking Portland, Oregon, which I think is one of the most beautiful states in America. Um, shout out my brother Reggie, everybody out there at Nike, yeah. out there in Portland. Uh, but you all the way over there, how do you get tapped? To Tracy, come to New York Tracy, City. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy Florida. found you in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, they was offering me the job. She offered me the How, job. No, I talk, no, no, but hold up. There's Virginia, there's LA, there's this. How did they find Ebro in Portland, Oregon? Like, what the fuck was you doing to make them go well, all had, the way over there and say you the illest? I had a special skill because I was on air from 1990. So I was DJing and cracking the mic and programming radio you know what i'm saying so i was doing several disciplines in the game in the 90s and then had managed my own staff and knew how to manage staff and program and you know um she, she you know her and um the end of you know judy ellis who else tracy clarity judy ellis um steve smith they was all on board you know to bring me over and um you know i i wasn't all that, the way into what's that it. like for you i mean similar Oh, uh, the Bay Area is similar to New York. But what's that like? You come to New York. At that time, I mean, it's home of hip-hop. It's the number one radio station in America. Mob Deep ram rapping with razor blades in their mouth. Yeah, Wu-Tang. Like, like, what the fuck was that like coming from Portland, Oregon, to New York City to deal with guys like Fat Joe the Gangster? And, and well, these, you know, like... I was, I was, you know... As you know, because you've traveled around, you know, it's, it's hoods everywhere. It's gangsters everywhere. So, you know, it ain't, you know, it's, it's the same mentality, just different dialects and dress and 
know what I'm saying? The hood is the hood. People are going to kill you and rob you and do whatever they're going to try to do to you anywhere. The hood, the street's going to eat. So, you know, I wasn't wor too much worried about that because I'm, you know, I'm a straightforward guy. You know, I'm honest. You know, I keep my word. You know, and if I, you know, as you know, if I don't like something, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I like something. I've never been, you know, that's why I never really had problems because I tell people straight up. So, um, and I wasn't really, I wasn't coming here to be the boss. I was coming here to help. You know what I'm saying? I was hired to support and help Angie and help Flex and help Tracy and help, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't about me. You know what I'm saying? It was about me doing the job that, you know, I was I was here to do. So no, the other and all the killers in New York City was like, how the fuck this guy coming from the West Coast, mm -hmm. running the radio? And, and, and you know, with the thing with hip hop is that in basketball, they got to go to college. Yeah. In, in, in football, they had to go to nice... Uh, schools to be in hip hop, you don't need a high school diploma. You just need to be talented, and most of most of them got homeboy management and entourages. And these guys don't understand politics and all that. And so they was like really in their feelings when a guy named Ebro said, "Yo, I ain't feeling your record, or I can't play the record." And the type of shit I was hearing yeah. was out of this world. That's right. And so you know what happened to me? I'm going to tell you what might have saved you, right? <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to tell you. When I first went, Flojo's my first single. Uh, this is a joke for a moment, guys. Flojo's my first single. Uh, I had a show when Hot 97 did it in Lehman College. And when I got there, it was, it was number one in the country, Flojo, number one on Hot 97. When I got there in the Bronx, I had like 30, 40 guys with me. Some guy that worked for Tracy was at the door telling me I can't bring my people in. Now, this is Fat Joe. I'm still in the street, 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 street. I don't know a thing about politics. Long story short, I body slammed him <laughs> and walked inside. R rappers who are watching, this is mistake 101 for a lifetime, right? I don't know politics or nothing. Yeah. I walk inside, I do my show, yo, everybody here to see Fat Joe, the Bronx phenomenon. And for a couple of years after that, I couldn't really get my record played on Hot 97 full rotation because mm -hmm. I had offended. The, the 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 hot ninety seven for doing that, and um I had learned my lesson, so yeah. I went to a million dinners with Tracy, begging her to play my shit. I begged the guy who I body slammed. I forgot his name. I don't even want to say his name. A hundred times to forgive me, and eventually, like four years later, they said, "All right, we'll forgive you. Everybody yeah. loves you." You know, um, and so. Artists don't really, so I knew that. So when people would be like, y'all want to hurt this nigga Ebro, I'd be like, yo, you don't want to do that because they'll never play your shit again. Yeah. And something that's uh, scary about radio mm. is you guys are always competition, but the truth is y'all really together. Mm. And so, I'm going to well, tell you we all we all in the same industry. Y'all all in, but y'all all together, all, competition, everything. So, Hence, where was you at when Wu Tang dissed Hot 97 on the stage? Um, shit, what year was that? I, I'd have to know by the year. Oh, I was there. And yeah. so they ran out of time and they started saying, We yeah. popped your cherry. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they wouldn't get off the stage. Yeah, no, nah, it was crazy. Steve Rifkin wanted to die. I was standing in the crowd with Steve, he knew it was over. And yeah. so Wu-Tang, every album they put out was going four million, five million, every single one of them. And because they threatened Hot 97, which is really wrong. Like, they didn't know, but whatever. Um, If you watch the Wu-Tang documentaries and everything, they say their whole career was over at that point because not just Hot 97, every radio station in the country, mm -hmm. your competition, stopped playing Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. Well, and also, too, you know, New York was their base. So if they wasn't, if the base wasn't, you know, there for them, then it was hard for other markets to pick up on the on the wave. 
you know, a lot of artists look past that moment, you know, and how important their local base is. You know what I mean? No matter where you go, and you know this, like, as an artist, like, and l fortunately for you, you got two bases. You got Miami and you got New York. You know what I mean? But you make sure that when you come with your record, you go straight to home base, start from home base every time. And and it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And if you, you know, look, man, you know. Yeah, but what are um, you saying at this time? Because you got to understand, at that time, you had no competition. You basically, Hot 97, I don't want to say you single-handedly, but even Angie came up in that minute. You had a monopoly. Y'all pretty much was the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, but you know, that was, that's not my, there. that wasn't my era, though. That wasn't my era. I didn't come until 02, 03. That's so not my era. you when the situation nah. happened with Wu-Tang? Uh-uh. I wasn't there. Oh, so that's before you. Yeah, that's before my time. So what happened when Nas went bad on Hot 97 and said it was, he that flipped was a, the switch? Yeah, that was a nasty. That was 2002. Now, I, this I is Nas, Illmatic, Mr. Queens, Mr. Yeah, New York. Yeah, that was a bad. He goes bad, bad on Hot bad. 97. What is, is, what is Ebro saying behind the scenes at that time? Well, right I, I, I was in the process of being hired. So that's summer... 2002. So you still wasn't there for the Nas shit either? I was there the next year, 2003, when we brought Nas out and put him on the throne at Summer Jam. That was the first time in 2003 was my first Summer Jam when we took over Giant Stadium for the first time. And that, and that was when we, it was either 03 or 04 where we brought Nas back out and tightened things back up. That was the Made You Look remix. Remember when we shot the video, it was the Hot 97 Made You Look remix video. We was ironing things up and fixing it up. Because, you know, truth is, yeah, I think, you know, when he went down the block, you know, I think it was on, um, ah, who was he on the air with? I don't remember, but, um, you know, that hurt. It hurts. It hurt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, was way major, that was a major. Yeah, but that's competition. That was, that, that was a dark you know? day in New York City, huh? It, well, I mean, it hurts. It hurts. But, you know, you know, you don't, um, you don't put, uh, the greats to sleep that easy. So, you know, we still here. And, the, and you know, and all the people, a lot of the people, whether it's Angie, whether it's Flex, Enough, you know, Camillo, you know, a lot of people is that, that are great at their craft are still here. And that brand is still here. As much as people have tried to put Hot 97 to sleep, how many different times? You know what I'm saying? We still having this conversation today. Everybody in the world know what that logo is. You know what I'm saying? It's and, the heritage station. Yes, yeah, and and it's and even deeper than that, I think it, it it focuses on New York and the local community as much as possible. Mm, and I think that goes that goes back to that goes back to what I was saying about home base, you know, and really and really being true to your base. Yeah, we can't. Uh, we we you 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 can't deny that Hot 97 is a staple. Uh, Hall of Fame. It's a landmark in New York City in itself. Yeah, but competition like, is real. Competition is real. So what you what you feeling like, okay, because this is another joke for a moment, because, you know, what you feeling like when they plucking away at High 97, they go get Angie, yeah. they go get Envy, they yeah. go get Clue. Did they ever approach you to go over the power? Well, long before I got here, you know, I know a lot of people over there. So um, I, I, I had made it known in the industry that I would never work for. Well, at the time, it was Clear Channel. Um, but I had made it was kind of known that I wasn't interested in that uh, working for so that company. So you was never approached like, yo, Ebro, we got a slot for you over here. There was conversations that happened. You know, would you be interested? And when your contract is up, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I made it clear that's not for me. I'm not interested in that. Well, you know, down here in Miami, I was approached with a million dollars for Khaled to leave 99 jams. Yeah, I heard. He didn't take it. Because, and, and, and you know, and I'm sure he explained to you why. Because it, cause it's, it's the long game. You know what I'm saying? It's about being, a, it's, you know, it's not, money's not the motivation for everybody. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes it's about joy and happiness and being a part of legacy and being a part of culture. And that'll lead, you know, when you're having, look, it's cliche when they say you're having fun, you know what I'm saying? When you're having fun doing what you love, you're never really working for the rest of your life and all that. That's real shit in this game. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when you work at a place that believes in you, 
You know what I mean? And and what you represent and gives you the room to do that. You know, you don't want to give up that space to just go chase a bag. Some and people so, do, though. I wasn't interested. How do they allow you to do Hot 97 and Apple Beats? Um, well, I'm technically, uh, I, I'm an executive over at Apple, so I'm, I'm the global head of hip hop and R&B. I'm also on, I'm talent over there too. And I also do the morning. I show always say high. Ebro got butt naked pictures of everybody. Yeah, I don't know how you can cut the president and everything, but yeah, but yeah, Ebro, yeah, Ebro. So how do you get, how do you get, oh shit, I 97 is in the, uh, in, yeah, what's in up, the notes. Team? All we need yeah. is power in the notes. We need them to battle on the fucking comments. Yo, man, and, uh, you, you want to see it? You want to see it? Nah, you know, you know when you come up on here, cause I. All right, so how do you get to run Apple Beats? Let me let me stay on my focus. I, I'm I'm just overseeing the team that does the hip hop and R and B side, not the whole. I'm not over the whole thing. By, I know I know. By any far stretch. Um, but I you know I've known um the team at Beats Music before it became was bought by Apple Music. And then when they oh, wanted to oh. start when they wanted to start doing radio, you know, look, I I've done radio for a long time. So whether it's on the air or behind the scenes, I can help people, you know, put together programs, manage things, build things, uh, you know, help their team get better. That's what I do for that's my real, you know, what I really do. Um, and so uh, it was the same thing. They started, you know, Apple has a free radio station inside the app. So when you go on your app on your phone, you click on radio and you can listen to free radio. So I was just a part of that. Me, Zane Lowe, uh, and, you know, other people behind the scenes. You know, shout to and so home. and so. I never programmed a station, but uh, for many years I don't do it as much. But for many years I kept my ears to the ground to hear whatever the new artist was. Like I knew Fifty Cent before he blew up. Mm -hmm. I knew everybody before. I was one of those that always knew who the next one. Who's the next one? Who, who, who's the, next the next artist right guy? now? I mean, look, you know, in New York, man. I mean, that kid CJ got a thing. That whoopty right there, yo. Listen. He been listen, on the show. Listen, that guy got a thing. I heard he's that cooking some... and, and, and he and he seems listen. well grounded. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I think you know the team behind him. You know, people we know. You know what I'm saying? Like that could actually, you know, navigate him. It's not just you know, uh, the the homeboy network. It's people with real. You know, just shout to James Cruz. You know, yeah. he's been in the game a long time, so. I think they can help the boy grow and legend, navigate. Legend in the game. Shout out to Nori. Nori said Zane Lowe got him thrown out of Apple Music. Is this a fact? <laughs> oh, I never heard of that. When did that happen, Nori? He says he's banned from Apple Music because of Zane Lowe. Get the fuck out. He lying. Get the fuck up. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, yeah, your man. Your man. Uh, yo, Nori comes on here and harasses my guests. Yeah, I know. Because I owe Nori a visit. And Nori been asking me. But we just never linked up, so he probably in here trying to stir up shit because I owe him. Yeah, because you know what I say to North, what I say to my, my my guests who say that I say when you on here it's like you on drink champs. Nori and Fat Joe. Y'all got city. beef. Y'all got beef. That, that no, we ain't shit. got no beef. Y'all got y'all y'all got platform beef. Y'all, you nah, know what I mean? No, we don't. I sit here and I watch Street Champs all night. This is my brother. I love him. Of course. I love him. To I don't care. I'm rich. He in your comments. I ain't got no to... problems with him. I'm Yo, good. Nori in your comments trying to fuck up your shit right now. You better No, he's fucking with you. Oh, nah. He ain't talking to me. And he want to play you in handball. Yo, 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 yo. Let me ask you something. Hold on, hold on. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, listen. Yo, yo, listen. Yo, listen. Yo, e bro. Yo. I got a bike. I ride bike. But you right. definitely wear the tights. And yeah, the helmet. Yeah, yeah, I go hard. <laughs> yeah, I go hard. I go hard. Yo, you catch me on that cycle. I have the spandex on, the helmet. Dude, what the fuck? You got the helmet hey, and everything. Hey, hey, we be hitting 60 miles at 20 miles an hour. If you was doing that shit too, you would have the right hard. gear on. Nah, you, you ain't hard. you ain't hanging with I me. I got an e-bike, I go hard. Nah, bro. This ain't with this ain't that. <laughs> this ain't this that. Ain't that. This ain't that. This ain't that. So you saying you could beat me in a bike ride? Fat Joe, come on, bro. <laughs> no, Listen, I'm man. telling y'all, you crazy, yo. Man. Listen, man. That's what happened to Khaled with the basketball game. Yo, listen, man. That's what listen. happened to Nori with the handball game. Yo, you know, Nori yo, me, I beat him Joe, in handball. Joe, 
Joe, real talk, man. I'm a ni- I'm a nice guy. That's why I never really had any problems because I'm a nice dude, man. I ain't running around with no security. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to stun on nobody. I'm just a nice, regular dude trying to help people get money, man. That's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ebro, let me ask you something. Do you uh, consider yourself a hip hop journalist or shock jock? I consider myself. Hey, yeah, uh, what's wrong with you, Jay? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I you know, consider my, okay. That's my guy. I know. Yo me, and, yo, me and Dre, me and Dre be chopping it up on the text, man. Like, that's my guy. Yes, sir. I know, I know. So uh, do you consider yourself a hip-hop journalist or I'm a, a shot I'm a, I am a, I'm a radio media guy. And I'm a hip-hop fan. I, I, and then, and then out of that is born, yeah, yeah, but you know, no, 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 because let me, I'm let definitely me, let me, not a shock jock. I'm definitely not a shock jock. Definitely not. Yeah. But you, you, you definitely, definitely not. you definitely pull out some things when your artists go up there to you. Um, not just you, it wouldn't be fair to just say you, but pretty much most of it on here. We celebrate everybody. I wouldn't right? say that people think I'm malicious or trying to set them up. I, well, like, I've I don't seen think I, you. I've seen you. I'm going go bad. I'm black. going bad. I went bad. Go back black. I went. I went bad, but he went bad first. And now, Joe, you know me, like, like I, like, like you said, like you know, Cassie had their problems with me, but I ain't no sucker, bro. You ain't just gonna talk to me any old type of way. Like, I'm. I, I may not be no gangster, but now I could do what I gotta do. You ain't just about to come in my Yo, room Ebro, you got and stop. get loose. Hey, Cole and Black just came home from jail. Don't do that. Don't do that. Leave the man alone, man. Yo, never come way. to Florida. Yo, yo, listen. I Leave him alone or yo. never come to Florida. Trust yo, listen, me. Listen. If you want advice from me, don't listen. skip Fort Lauderdale. Don't land there. <laughs> don't land there. No. Look, yo, when you go back, I was trying to help him out. He got tight and started talking to my team crazy. He got tight and started talking to my team crazy. I was trying to help him out. Go watch it. I, I said, I said, I said to him, I said to him, yo, when when you get done with everything you're dealing with, because I know you take this stuff seriously too, like we do here. Let's talk about it. I was hoping he would say, absolutely, this is a serious thing that I take very serious, right? Which would then show the world, like, yo, the guy is being a stand-up guy about everything that's going on with him. But instead, he tightened up. And then no, you no, because just, he felt like yo, he don't got to tell you everything. I like, didn't ask him no question. I didn't uh, ask him a question. Uh, I didn't but ask listen, him what happened. Okay, what, what, what happens is you guys think that everybody got to just answer whatever the questions is. It wasn't a question, Joe. It was an it was a, it was a invitation to, to later on discuss if you feel like it. <laughs> It wasn't no question. But now you're not just about to cuss at the girl. You're not about to just cuss at Laura Styles. And you're about to just get the fuck out of here with that. Hell no. You better stop talking like that, man. It get crazy for a lot of that. I'm telling you. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it Don't does. Go there. I'm sure it does, sir. I'm, I'm sure it you, does. You gotta believe it. Listen, let's go positive vibes, right? Let's go positive vibes. Uh-huh. Today I was surfing Instagram and yeah. I saw Yo Gotti. Give an artist about a million dollars in cash. Mm. I never seen no shit like this. Do you know the name of the artist, Dre? You didn't see this, Ebro? No, I didn't see it. You, you don't know the name of the artist, right? This motherfucker Got- must be. I, I was waiting for you to say him. Because, I mean, when I ask you who's the new hottest motherfucker, it got to be the guy that yo guy that gave a million dollars cash to today. Yo, the, these guys be streaming. They doing numbers out here. They doing numbers. I don't, and I don't know. Yo Gotti does have a new artist. Um, but I don't be knowing who artists are signed to. I'm going to keep it a buck. I don't really pay attention to who signed to who. I look at the numbers and what the audience is responding to. So I'm not even really most of the time paying attention to who signed to who, what's on whose label. I don't look at that shit. I listen to the DJs. I talk to the guys that are on the front lines and say, yo, what, what you seeing, what you hearing? I look at social media, see what people talking about. I don't really, like a lot of a lot of label guys, I'm cool with them, but they don't His promo His name is me. EST. Damn, EST. Oh, EST. Is so 
Yeah, EST. Yeah. No, that was DST, the un the unusual oh, fellow. DST three times dope. Philly, no disrespect. Yeah, that was DST. that was three times dope. EST. Three times dope. Yeah. Oh, EST, ain't he from Kentucky? Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky. yo, he's fire, bro. Yeah. Fire. Yo, yo, guy, he just gave him a million dollars cash on Instagram. Yo, yo, EST is fire, bro. He, on, I think he's on the Bros album. Uh. Uh, what's the kid? The Tyler Harrow song, man. I like that kid too. Oh, Jack Harlow. That's the first time I heard him on Jack Harlow's album. Jack Harlow put me on tour. Hey, this fire. guy, EST. I never seen nothing like this. Like with, I never, I never in hip hop. Yeah, somebody music. just added him. ESTG. Yeah, ain't no. I never Ooh. seen nothing like that in my life. Yo, guy. Listen, that guy's fire. That, that guy gotta be the best. Like, like, yo, I'm telling you, like, yo, I seen it with my That's own true. eyes. Yo, God, he gave him that. Yo, these guys is doing numbers on these streams, man. They doing their thing on these streams out here, man. They building fan bases and they doing their thing. And you always been ahead of the curve. So you made that move around time. Because this is the problem with radio, right? Yeah. Radio and, and respect to radio, of course, man. They understand, but we talking, um, Dre wants me to be political, and that's 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 fucking up my interview, right? And tell so, Dre, tell Dre, we'll talk about politics another time. Yeah, yeah because you know I got the number one most added record to yeah, today yeah. in just three days. Celebration, yo, that's yo. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be on your wave on this moment, yo. Because let's talk, yo. Listen, listen. Remember that day, Giant Stadium. Fat Joe, was, Fat Joe was mad at me. Fat Joe was super mad. Like, why well, I don't have my own set? This lean back is ringing off out here. I was like, Joe, trust me when I tell you, when you bust out on this stage, the thing is going to split the fuck open. Ah, nah, Ebro, fuck that. I deserve my own. I said, Joe, just work with me. I think it was Lil John brought you out. That's right. The whole fucking building lost their goddamn mind. And I don't even know. Yo, I don't even know if you knew that everybody already knew the dance. Nah, it was only like a week old. The song was a week old. Yeah. When everybody's the whole <sighs> that was like a moment, you know, and I also say when Remy brought out Cardi B to Summer Jam. Ooh. Ooh. That was the big moment. That was when we knew, like, oh, yeah. shit, this girl's for real, for real. For real, for real. She ain't just Sue's Rendezvous or Little right. Lounge Hot. Yeah, yeah. She she rocked the stadium. And so that night was, was big for me because I remember looking back, and I seen Kanye West peeking out the back. Like, he had a sh shock face. Like, oh, Because you know what shit. else happened that year? I, that was the year that... The first beats, the first uh, verses in history took place. That was the Swiss Beats Kanye battle. Y'all could Google it. People took video from the stands. Swiss Beats and Kanye West battling. Legend. So you, so you're claiming a a a, a, a percent of verses. One. Absolutely not. No, no. We just provide the platform for people to be amazing, brother. That's it. You know, Dr. Yeah. Fauci said July 4th, we're going to have barbecues, no masks. We outside? We outside? Barbecues, no Joe, mask on. Joe, where's the first thing you're doing? What is the first thing you're doing? Me? First. Pre-promoted, pre pre not like a pop-up, not like I'm going to tell you the truth. Thing. What Fat Joe loves is an incredible birthday party. And last year I got robbed. I mean, we was in Turks and Caicos. Yeah. We had the big mansion on the beach and all that, and we did it virally. But every birthday I like to, you know, I want to get Lisa Lisa. I want to get Bobby Brown. I want to get Guy. I want to, I, I, you know, I, I like to spend money on my Yo, birthday. BBD. Yo, BBD. Yo, BBD. You got to get BBD. BBD. Like, what? Disrespectful shit jumping off in there. You know, Fat Joe, happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? That That's the main thing I'm thinking about. And Fauci, when Fauci said July 4th is cookout, no mask, I'm thinking August 19th, 
It all goes down. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't see this, ladies and gentlemen. What Joe's saying about Fauci it's saying, a fact. I didn't see it. CNN, it's a fact. I, I think it's going to be July 4th with a mask. I don't think we're going to be no mask yet. Nah, Fauci said no mask. <laughs> nah, I don't, I ain't buying it. Man. Just, it just, just, uh, Joe Biden just bought 200 million, uh, Vaccines. Said 300 million people will be vaccinated. 300 million people will be vaccinated by then. I got to see it, man. I gotta by fall, he said. I got to see it, man. I got to see it. What do you think about the vaccine? Because you look like you vegan and you juicing and shit, riding your bike. I'm, I'm 50, <laughs> what do you 50, think? I'm 50 50 on the vax, man. I, I'm, I've done a lot of reading. I've interviewed Fauci a couple of times. The, uh, this lady y'all should follow. Her name is Dr. Kizzy. PhD. She's 34 years old, black woman. She works. She was one of the leaders on figuring out this vaccine. Um, a lot of people think that the vaccine was rushed. The vaccine wasn't rushed. The approval was sped up. They've been working on this vaccine, I think, for like five years. So remember SARS? Remember the SARS shit and MERS? SARS 19. It's, yep. it's, it's the Africa. same. They've been they've been working on this this identifying a pro so what they the way it's explained to me from them is they have identified a piece of protein in the virus's dna and it's so they're not giving you a live virus when they give you the vax like you know when you get measles and all that they giving you or when you get inf uh, the flu vaccine and all that they're giving you a little piece of the virus this ain't that they're giving you a protein so your immune system can now beat that protein, learn that protein. So if you come in contact with the virus, your body already knows what it is and it doesn't freak your body out and your body can beat it. So they're giving you that to teach your body how to beat it. They're not giving you the live virus. So, you know, um, I'm 50-50 on it, you know, like, like everybody else. Like, you know, I feel like if they could guarantee me that if I took the virus, I couldn't give the the virus to someone else. If I took the vaccine, I couldn't give it to somebody. Uh, I think I would probably be more open to it, right? To protect my family and yeah, friends. Yeah, I'm taking cetera, the vaccine. I took my mother and father to take the vaccine already. That's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And I'm I'm gonna take it too. That's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. My brother, my brother just my brother just got his his he had the tracheotomy. You know, he had the ventilator. He just got his throat sewn back closed. He just started talking and walking again. Um, from COVID? You know, from COVID. He's been in the hospital since the end of October. You know, and, and uh, he going to take the vaccine. You know, so if you if you got older people in your family, you know what I'm saying? If they over 65, 70, y'all need to be having conversations about this vaccine in a real way, for sure. And anybody I else out there, yeah, facts. I you took my to. mother and father first thing. Like, and, and, like, and by the way, anybody popping that shit, you've been vaccinated since you was a kid, bro. Like, everybody be popping that shit, bro, you've been vaccinated. Measles, mumps, rubella, you done got poli, you done got all type of shit. Yo, and by the way, here go the other piece. I just took vaccines because I go to Africa. To go to Ghana, you have to take a yellow fever vaccine. <laughs> you can't yeah, even get it. in the country without the fucking thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, like first I said, time I went to Africa, young. they gave me a bunch of needles. Yeah, you got not just one. Hepatitis, one. fucking all bunch of shit. And I went back to Africa a hundred times without taking them fucking needles. Like that was just the first time. After yeah. that, I was like, "Fuck that! I'm going to Africa." I never got. Um, let me ask you something. Coming from, you know, our era of hip hop, um. Can you truly enjoy new music, new, new yeah. young? There's some things. Like we were just saying that do EST, man. There's cats out here that really. Shout out to CJ there. Because I'm going to tell you personally, I love some of the young guys. But whenever I see a guy my age on Instagram bumping some extra young shit, I be like, yo, this guy's front. He, he trying to act like he knows well, what it is. Now, now Lil Baby is fire, bro. No, little, little baby's baby fire. Super fire. Don't play around. No, and no, fucking, no. There's little baby, the baby. The baby's fire too. Super fire, but little baby. 
That boy, to me, he's my favorite young rapper in the game. He took, he no disrespect, but he took this, he took the for years I kept saying Kendrick and, and J. Cole. I gotta hear a new Kendrick project. But that little baby. Nah, they different. They different. They different. They not even in the same convo. That's not the same conversation. That's not the same conversation. You can't just put all rappers in the in a rapper bucket. Like, nah, you can't do that. No, but little baby in the rapper bucket. I'm no, he is. No, but he got his own, he got his own style and his own yeah. thing. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He not doing what they doing, which makes it even more remarkable. You know what I'm saying? Cole not doing what Kendrick doing. Kendrick not doing what Lil Baby doing. Like, there's cats out here that's dead nice. That's so let me ask you something, Ebro. Uh, when you came to Hot 97, Mark D, Nas, Jay-Z, Heavy Rockefeller, Man Fleet, and now you're in your car, and, you, and you're telling me when you're alone and nobody's looking at you, you're bumping the new hip hop. It depends. Not all of it. Nah, not all of it. All of it ain't for me, man. I'm 40. I'll be 46 in March. It ain't for me, bro. Some of that shit come on. I'm like, nah. I mean, but you know, I I get it because it's not for me. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. But now, what I you know you know how I get Joe. You know, motherfuckers be talking that shit like they nice as. Ho for big or they nice at chill out, bro. Cause I'll put on one of them motherfuckers right now, and your music you make it right now does not sound better, and you don't rap better. That's what makes a Kendrick and these young dudes so extra special. Is there what they're making right now? You can play it right next to the best. Mm. KRS, Rakim, mm. you, you know, and by the way, there's only a few. You know what I'm saying? In any in any music genre, Joe, like there's only always a few that are the preeminent. You can go to any we can genre. take we can take even though she ain't new, but you could take a Jasmine Sullivan and play it right next to a Mary. Yeah, or, oh yeah. Like, forget it. It's right there. Quality, per, uh, talent, execution, Joe. You're you're one of, and I've told you this. You know, if you ever decided you wanted to stop making records and help other people make records, um, you know, you're you have a great ear for the creation of music. You know, you can listen to a record and tell somebody that when they recorded that, they didn't really the performance, the booth performance, it wasn't there, like in the recording session. And I think that's what a lot of these young artists miss. They don't really know how to like leave all of it in the recording. Yeah, because session. because I was going back to my point I was gonna make that Dre was trying to stop me. Because <laughs> radio, whether radio wants to believe it or not, and I respect all of radio, their audience is a little older. Yeah, absolutely. Streaming. Yes. The radio the knows radio, that though. Radio knows the radio, that. Radio PDs sometimes think they're A and R's, right? And so they exactly. try, they're trying to grab that young audience so bad and don't realize that the last thing my daughter, 14 years old, is doing is turning on the radio. Fact. She's streaming all day on her phone. Fact. Right? And so now they're looking for the iggity iggity. You know what I'm saying? And that they forget what a hit sounds like when they hear a hit. They like... Yo, one of my biggest pet peeves is radio niggas that want to tell artists what they should have done to, to make the song. Like, I hate that shit. And I hate when artists say, I made a song for the radio. I hate that shit. Make a song for the people. Radio's You know the song, the song I hate the most and, uh, and Dre's here... The, the song I hate the most that I did, and it went number one in America, uh, Hot 100 number one, was Get It Poppin'. Because we sold out. We made that record for the radio. <laughs> like, no, no, no. We really, really sold out. And and we were right. It went number one in America. Yeah. Well, because it, it, no, it was one of those records that it was like, I, you know, it goes, like, look, as a programmer, records come out and you hear it and you're like, I mean, I get where this goes. 
Like it's not. And, and the other thing is, remember, radio programmers, they're programming so that people don't turn off the radio, which means think about it. The more I can not jar you while you're listening, meaning it feels familiar every time a song comes on. There's familiarity. It's not jarring. It doesn't require you to like think or listen or what is this or you know what I mean? That's what a, a programmer is trying to make a, a, a flow, a seamless flow where the radio is just on. You're locked in and it's not disturbing you. It's getting you from point A to point B on your commute. You know what I mean? It's easy. Um, and that's most that's like the the the, the, the 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. But when the night DJs come on, that's where the risks take place. That's where you try new shit. The weekends is where they try you try new shit, and you you know, or that's why I like that. You know, you have the the midnight the mixtape come the mixtape cats come on at midnight. You know, trying new shit, um, and that's what that's for. Because you know, if you got the radio on later at night, you're not a nine to fiver. You know what I'm saying? You're a you got a different type of lifestyle. Odds are, if you're up late like that. So you're more inclined to try to hear some shit that you haven't heard before. Mm. You got a little bit now, more patience. Bro. Shout out just incredible out of LA. He's on the comments. Uh Ero, we, before I let you go, and this been this has been a very uh You said who's in the comments? Just incredible out of LA. Yo, Justin, what's up, baby? I thought you were shouting out Justin LaBoy. Respect hashtag respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> James Cruz is in on here. Every the whole world watching, and everybody and their mothers on here who won't comment. You know the biggest is on here. They they watch our show every night. I don't know if you know because you try to take my show lightly. What like you talking about? earlier, I called you. You was like, "Yo, what time to come on?" You I didn't know, know you had a so set time. I didn't know that. I didn't know it had a set time, Joe. You know the big show started at 8 o'clock. This is the biggest fucking show in the game, Ebro. <laughs> Yo, like, I'm listen, saying, 10 and a half months, we done oh, had whoever you named them been on this motherfucker. We done broke so many news. Yes, yes you have. Yes, absolutely. Well, you haven't told me that yet, Ebro. God, well, like you've been in media all these years. <laughs> You haven't said, yo, Joe, not for nothing, this is the big, 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 big show. Joe, not for nothing, this is one of the big, big, big shows out here. Because <laughs> we got to take this shit. This for real. Yo, listen, man. Yo, but I got to, now you in, you in my world now, so I got to critique you like, like you would critique me if I no, I'm the best in the game. Yo, Ebro, let me tell you something, bro. I don't even care what you think or what they think because I'm the biggest in the game. That's right. I'm That's what you're supposed to you, say. Ebro. Yeah, Ebro, I'm not, I know what I've done is impossible. It's like me, and, I, and this is respectfully and humble. I want to yeah. be very humble about this. Clark it's Kent, like what I up, know baby? what I am when I throw that, 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 that monster out there right now, that song yeah. out there. Yeah. And guys who came out with me ain't got no front teeth, bro. That's right. That's right. Like, let's keep it real. Like, yeah, no. Like, History being made as we're speaking. Give Joe his flowers, goddammit. Nah, and I'm saying, as a journalist, yeah. we have Bobby Brown come up on here yeah. and say he taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk. <laughs> and which everyone else said they didn't agree with that right there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying, they don't came in here and said some shit. Yeah. Uh, Ebro. Your top five, dead or alive. We do it oh. to everybody. All right, top five, dead or alive. Uh, Ho, Big, uh, Rakim, KRS. Uh, uh, who else would I? Top five. And Nas, and Nas. I figured you for a far side guy. Yo, far side. <laughs> no, I love far side. Yeah, okay. Nas. That's oh, that's it. I know you trying to yo, you trying to. You're trying. No, 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 no. I know what you trying to do. No, I know what you trying to do. I know what you trying to do. No. You know I'm a you know I'm a '90s backpack kid. You know what I'm saying from the West Coast. I know what you're what trying the to do. The Far Side. They fire yo. The Far Side got two fire albums, but now they don't and listen. Stop. We not we not doing that. How don't about do that. I got five on it? Looney's is fire. Shout to Yuck Mouth. 
You know I know. Yeah, I know. You know I know. Yeah, I know you know. I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know. So is the mischief. So is the mischief. Shout out to my brothers, the hieroglyphics. You know what I'm saying? All the we hieroglyphics. Like uh, yeah, y'all know. Y'all know. Y'all know. Can't keep running away. Uh, facts. Facts. Yo, at that time, you was heavy on that wave right there. What was I? Cause that's 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 the Bay Area. That's L.A., California, Bay Area, but it all goes together, right? So you know, when you was a, I was a tribe called Quest kid. You know what I'm saying? De La Soul, KRS. You know, I, I'm coming from that school. Kane, Rakim. You know, I liked all that. You know what I'm saying? I had the flat, I had the Gumby flat top. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was scooping scrap. You know, I'm I'm coming up through that. I had my my beads on with my rayon printed shirts and you know what I'm saying too. What was, what was the remember the oak tree in the mall? You know, you get the two suits for ninety nine dollars. I'm gonna, I used to I'm gonna be honest with you, Ebro. Yeah. You, you embrace old man, Ebro. You embrace maturity. Mm. You got the grays on your beard. Uh, I have a new product come out coming out called Rewind. What's and that? I want to give you a year subscription for free. <laughs> nah, but we to color this yeah, beard nah, back I don't fuck to with your that. natural oh, nah. color. I don't fuck with that. I mean, one nah. box got Khaled on there for that nah. jet black. One's got nah. Tyson Beckford. Nah. One's got Fat Joe. Uh -uh. Can we take, can nah. we relieve nah. ammonia the free uh -uh. the beard and bring you back to Ero? Nah. Yo. Young man in the Ero. Yo, and I know, and I'm going to tell you something. And when I know you get joy out of this, and I want you to enjoy this moment, cause I got that mic tomorrow morning, Daddy. Ah! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got that mic tomorrow morning. Yo, Ebro, this is what yo, I Ebro, do, my I'm nigga. Yeah, this is what yeah, I do, my nigga. Oh, he got you tomorrow. <laughs> yo, I'm like, yo, I'm yeah, here now, baby. Do, my nigga. I got that mic tomorrow. Yo, Ebro, I'm here now, but I'm gonna tell you something. When you ride the bike. Don't wear the small helmet. Don't wear the small. <laughs> nah, my, I, yo, yo, you really got the jokes, big. Get them off. No, no, no. Get them nah, off. I mean, no, nah, because you. Nah, I'm gonna leave it at that because there's there's infamous. I'm scared to wear the helmet because I've seen other artists with the helmet on and it's it's been chasing them down for 10, 20 years. I, that's why I can't wear the helmet. Yeah, you know. Hey, listen. When y'all ready to see me on these roads, when y'all ready to see me, you can put, yo, pull up with your e-bike, I'll wear you out. How about that? Can't do it. I'm nice with mine, man. E pull up with the e-bike. Nice. Yo, 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 e yo, I'm shout, nice with my to, Hey, yo, shout to all my people that be up on that 9W, you know what I'm saying, in 30 degree weather, you know what I'm saying, 40 degree weather, riding all the way up to uh, Bear Mountain. You know what I'm I saying? Putting in their mouth. I've been on my elliptical because it's been a little chilly in Miami. Am I supposed to go out there in the yes. cold? Yes. If you real, if you real. If I'm a real biker, I'm supposed to go out there in the cold. So what I gotta wear? Spandex to be yeah, warm? Yeah, Joe, Joe, put your spandex on, man. Can't do it. <laughs> put your spandex on. No, I'm telling you, your emo. Now, now, Joe. Now, Joe. Now, Joe. The helmet and the, the 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 spandex, I can't do it. Joe, the streets are saying. I just got some text. The streets are saying you was at the spot getting the beard tattooed on. We need to know. <laughs> are you trying to jump with me? Yeah, I don't get that, that's tattoo. what they saying. That's Listen, what they saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. I know you. No, I'm just no. saying. I maybe maybe if I did the top, it would be tattooed. Yo, do the line. Do the no, line. No, my line. My line is perfect, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? My chicken grow like yours. No, I'm talking about like the line. No. I'm talking about the line up here. Get the line up. Like, from nah, flex I, nah, nah, I don't need it like that. I'm sexy bald, e bro. I'm not, I'm not tripping off the line. Now, I can Joe, get the line. I got money to do whatever I want to do. Yo, Joe, was you proud of our brother Funk Flex when he when he went lipoed up on the gram? When he lipoed up. Lipo on the gram? Because... Yo, Yo Joe, Joe, you, you could, this. Joe. I don't have a problem. I Joe. brought Flex on here. I said, yo, I don't got a problem. It's your body. You do whatever you want to do. Women do it all the time. That's what you want to do. But did you put it on the gram to get a discount or something? Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Because <gasps> some of these rappers, they got six packs and all that shit, 10 packs. They got like They going to Columbia. 
They going to Columbia. They getting the body, getting their body done. They getting the mommy makeover. Body tip. They getting the mommy makeover. I'm not mad at them. <laughs> I'm not mad, but I'm telling you, some of these guys that we see in ten packed up. Yeah, no, it's not real. They going and to they, Columbia and they, they, and, they done. and they eating them hydroxy cut sandwiches too, taking the fucking diet pills and all that wild shit too. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I never, I can show you my stomach. I lost a whole Joe, you never, person. I, Joe, you never thought about getting a light bulb? Never in my life. You know why? Because I'm scared. If I wasn't scared, I'd have did it. Mm. I swear to you, if I wasn't scared of that shit, I would have did it. Now, Joe, y'all got to know, Joe's a very careful human being. Yo, Joe, there was a, how many years you didn't fly? You wouldn't fly for a long time. Man, I ain't fly for about 15 years, bro. Well, well now, was that, you never flew because you never flew before? Or something happened and you stopped? No, I flying? flew one time and maybe I didn't know, you know, I came for the projects. I came from being broke. I never been on a plane before. I went on a plane, something that me and you might call a bad experience now. Was like life, a death. Yeah, that was the end the of the world. Kept going around New York like this. I went to Puerto Rico one time, came back. That shit was going around for like two hours in in, in LaGuardia and couldn't land and went back. But that happened to me since I've been flying a hundred times already. Right. But many years ago, to me, it was like God, please. And when I got off the plane, I kissed the floor, the concrete, said I'll never fly again. And so, thank God, I was able to face my fears. Mm. And uh, and start flying, and I'm still scared every time I get on the plane, but I got to do it. Mm. I mean, how much money you think you passed on not flying back? Oh in the no, day? incredible! The whole what's love? I wasn't flying. I was getting about 150 thousand a show. Number one in the world. Yo, Flex wouldn't fly for a while neither. Cali too. Cali too. Uh Yo, I remember Irv Gotti begging me, harassing me. Yo, go over there. They got all the money in the world for you. Go over there. And I was like, yo, I can't do it. Mm. And, and then when I finally flew, I was like, damn, man, I should have got to the, to the bag bag. Yup. All right, my brother. Yo, thank you for coming on the big, big show. Love you, now, Joe. Now, now you can't play dumb no more. Like, this ain't the most... You know Alicia Keys, you know Sweetie, you know Kalani. Yo, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only man. here because you said you, you know wanted Mike to hurt Tyson. me in front of. I'm only here. You said you wanted to hurt me in front of the world while talking to Envy. I was like, wait, what? What happened? Yeah, Ebro, you better think, Beckas, <laughs> that you're walking around in human form, okay? Because <laughs> yeah. Beckas has yeah. saved your life in multiple occasions. You really? almost made, and I'll tell you something. And it's crazy. Many years ago, really? let me tell you, I'll tell you something. You almost made the white van. And let me tell you, you wouldn't have been the first guy to get in the back of that I heard about van. the white van. Oh, yes, yes. That that collect people. That collect people. Like, that collect people. Yo. And you was on the very top of the list. Yeah. I mean, you ain't hey, getting me in trouble out here. I just, hey, I, I just want to, I just, you know, like I always tell everybody, you know, I'm not one of them dudes. I'm a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Envy. I don't want no Envy. problems. Envy. I, don't, I, mean, I, I mean, Envy, other, other, let me get, um, Ebro, let huh. me say this to you. I'm not one of them guys. I'm a nice when guy. When you don't play somebody's record and you don't support a guy's record when he puts his life into that, they get very offended because they yeah. can't feed their kids. Yeah. Then that Khaled jumped in to light his love. Yeah, let's leave it at that. <laughs> let's stay in the light. Yo, listen, <laughs> let's stay in the light. What I am gonna say is, Ebro, you yeah. almost made the white van. How do you can you confirm that you have heard rumors of the white van? Oh, I've heard about the white van. I've heard about the white van. <laughs> yeah. I've heard about the white van. It comes but out not, on occasion. But not 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 with my name on it. No, no, you never Oh, your name. My name your wasn't shit on was it. Was vinyl wrapped over the white van. No, no. Oh, your no, name. No. Was vinyl rap Stop, man. in the white? No, it was no, not. I'm a positive guy. You, yo, 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 in your heart, you want it to no, smoke. In your, in Be, I was leaving. Your heart, I was leaving. Your heart, and you, you trying to say, say yo, yo, say it to my face. Yo, you in said, your heart, you, in your heart, you couldn't have even <laughs> done that to me. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Ebro. Sweet night.
The light is off. Dallas, the light is off. Dallas, the light is off. Yo, yo. I'll be listening to more. He listening. God bless. God bless the door to your family. I love you. Yo, send my love. Ah, ah, ah. They cross me like hot sauce. Nigga, we got sawed. I'll play with my game. You get knocked off.